Hey everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms with Matt today. What's up guys? And guys, we've got even more M1 carbines, but you know what's cool about these M1s? What's that? The fact that James River Armory has put their love, their heart, their soul into these rifles, guys. A while back we did an entire unveil of a bunch of M1s that were pretty much in their turn-in condition, mm -hmm. and James River Armory said, well, they like to come by and look around every now yeah. and then, and they said, those M1s. Can we take a couple of those? And it's like, yeah, sure, you can take a couple of those. And then they sent us back these pieces of art. And uh, let's go ahead and show off. Matt, I think you can explain it better than I can, but it looks like we have two different grades set up, right? Yeah, we have two options. So we have what we're calling our lightly refurbished yeah. versus our heavily refurbished. And basically the difference here on the lightly refurbished rifles, all the metal parts have been cleaned and re-blued, and then the stocks have just been given a cleaning. Okay. So they should still retain all of the original kind of character, just clean them up. Uh, that lets us preserve things like these kind of rack markings of some kind that you'll yeah. see on this rifle, versus on what we're calling the heavily refinished, they completely refinished the stocks as well. Yeah, and the stocks, so what they did is they actually used whatever type of refinishing that they did, but it also brings out the grain and everything, gets rid of all the little dings and dents that you mm -hmm. might see on some other ones that might have nicks and they just turned them into really beautiful rifles. I mean, it looks... Almost like new. Almost like new, yeah. yes, exactly. So, very cool that they've done that. And we've got a few of them to set up here just to show you guys. And this one I've got, looks like it's an inland under the rear side. It's kind of funny uh, trying to see them inland, and it's an inland barrel right up here from 43. So, we get to kind of cheat a little bit because, uh, when of course, they took these apart to redo the metal parts and stuff. Yeah. Uh, James River gave us a nice list of all the serial numbers by manufacturer, so yeah. that'll help us prevent some errors. But uh, I also have an inland, and this is one of the lightly refurbished, so the stock is original. And you can kind of see that with all these little dings and marks along the stock here. Um, there's some wear here on the upper handguard. It definitely kind of shows a little bit of age to that. Um, and again, on the bottom we showed, I see those rack numbers again. So that's something that's really cool, the kind of the original character of the history of this rifle. Yeah. Yeah, and these are just, again, gorgeous rifles. And for those of you that don't know, the M1 carbine, before the AR-15, was America's carbine. You know, everybody had one of these. I grew up with an Underwood, still have it in my safe today. I absolutely love it. It definitely looks like a turn-in condition. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, that one has a barrel from February of 44, I think mm -hmm. that one does. And that one is a Underwood, uh, both Underwood receiver and barrel. And hit this one here is another Inland, and the stamping on this one is just below the rear sight on the receiver so you can actually still make out inland on it and the barrel on this guy is also another inland. So one of the things to catch in my eye about that rifle is it's got an early stock. So yeah. one of what they call the high wood stock. So the the slot here is mm. just in the upper hand guard. There's no relief on the on the actual stock itself. Yeah so trying to compare that I'll hold them up and Matt if you could just show them exactly what you're talking yeah. about. So you can see here that this cutout is just in the upper hand guard versus it's relieved on the upper and lower yeah. here. And so this is an earlier, like a type one stock. Okay, so this would be considered a type one. This one that doesn't have the pregnant belly, but still has the cut on the lower portion of the stock mm -hmm. would be considered what, a type two? Like a type two, yep. And then a type three, it's kind of hard to tell the difference unless it's got kind of that fatter belly, but you, you I think you told me before, you kind of have to take it apart to see. Right, so there's like a, uh, between a type three and a type four, the main difference is like- a Type three and type four. Is an internal yeah. support. So a Type 3 and Type 4, you're going to get the larger uh, belly. It's kind of what they designed for when they went to the M2 fully auto carbine and right. they needed some more rigidity. Um, so that, uh, that support those more inside. So, you know, but both of them, like you said, you call it the, uh, you know, the, the fatter one. Yeah, the fatter one, right. And the stocks on these two, on the ones that were heavily refinished or refurbished, these ones here, I mean, they really just brought out all of the color on them, which just looks so good, especially this one here. Looks really good. Yeah, I say, I mean, I think it's a beautiful job. And yeah. if somebody is out there looking for something that looks like new, but yeah. still has that attachment history, because these are all rifles that were issued, you know, they were wartime production, yeah. came back to the U.S. They were refinished, or, or should I say like re-arsenaled by yeah. the U.S., which is why they all will have the, uh, the M mark on the, the mag release, as well as the like uh, switch style safety. Right. They all have the later style. You know, rear sight is because they did come back to the U.S., get re-arsenaled, and then they were sent abroad again as war effort, uh, right. war support. Uh, and this is, you know, come back in the country, and now we can own this beautiful piece of history. Yeah, almost like new, but with all the stories behind it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a super cool. Um, here is another one of the lightly refinished ones. So you're going to still see a lot of little dings and dents in the stock, but all it's that been, beautiful character. That's right, character. <laughs> and uh, 
you know, this is also an inland. It's matching barrel and receiver. Uh, so this is another great example here. Yep, and all of these two will come with one 15 round magazine. That's right. Just like some of the magazines guy. have been replaced. Yeah. So they're not all original magazines. Yeah, that one looks really clean. So that might be a replacement magazine. I have seen quite a few mags that look less than perfect, <laughs> we'll call it. But this one here looks pretty good. And here's another heavy refinished one or refurbished. And yeah, just a gorgeous looking stock on it. And like Matt said too, all of the metal parts have been re-blued as well. So all of that's still nice and protected, which yeah. is great. Now, I don't think we've gotten an image here of the, the butt stock. It's not the yeah. most uh, you know, visually in interesting piece, but it does show the butt plate's been refinished and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and you know, you can get uh, accessories for these things still. You can get oh, yeah. you know surplus slings or yeah. bayonets. Of course, 30 carbine is still something that's definitely uh, you know pretty pretty available pretty out there. Yeah. You know, we've mm -hmm. been getting some shipments of Korean surplus 30 carbine. Yeah, and that stuff works too. I, we've taken that to the range and shot it quite a bit, and I like it. It runs through my underwood fine. Runs through all these other ones that I've taken out and shot uh, just fine. And this one looks like most of the ones we have on the table are inland. Uh, have you seen any other manufacturers? Not that I've been able to make out on the table, but mm -hmm. uh, again, so you're going to find that there's two SKUs, so a different SKU for the heavy and the, the light refinished. Right. And then in each SKU, there will be a custom option for different manufacturers. Gotcha. So you'll be able to buy the specific manufacturer that you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Kind of hard to see again under that restock. This one might say Underwood. It's kind of hard to that, tell if that's that a... That stock is gorgeous. Yeah. Though. I'm kind of glad they didn't, they didn't completely refinish that one, right? Because that just looks... That looks really I mean, good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got a gorgeous kind of auburn color to it. Yeah. And I mean, I like it so much. Uh, let's see, what do we got up here for the barrel? Uh, it is an inland barrel, uh, March of 43. Yeah, nice. And it's really cool too, because the other manufacturers that we're talking about, I mean, uh, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I do know that there was a lot of different manufacturers that got involved in the war effort and just goes to show how the nation came together as a whole. To, to win this war, right? Well, yeah. So, like, you know, Rockola, of course, made jukeboxes. IBM Technology Company. That's right. Uh, there's farm national, equipment. Yeah, National Farm and Hoe. Yeah, that Fork and Hoe. Fork and Hoe, that's yeah. what it was. Then you had the National Postal Meter. That's right. Yeah, I mean, all sorts of stuff. Making him one carbine, singer sewing machine, you know, things well, like it that. It was a time when the country really came together yeah. in a time of need. And so it was total effort. Like, everything, yeah. you know, you had families who were collecting aluminum foil to recycle it yeah. for the war effort and people yeah. are rationing rationing uh i think rubber utilization too like how much you could actually drive because we needed rubber out there uh fuel there's also gasoline limitations so all sorts of you know just neat things really to think about and that wasn't that long ago in history it wasn't yeah uh, and you, you wow. think that you know people seem way more selfish nowadays yeah right uh also too in case you guys aren't familiar the controls on these guys are super simple you've got a magazine button right here right below or right behind the magazine Cool, push that, that allows the magazine to drop. And then what I've got back here is just a button on the bolt whenever, well, it doesn't work whenever you have a last round bolt hold open magazine, uh, but you'll notice there's a little button right on top of the charging handle. Pull that guy back, press the button, and that's what locks the slide to the rear. Nice, or the bolt to the rear. And then you've got your safety. And the way it was taught to me, the safety is really easy to figure out which way is fire, which way is not. Think of the safety selector whenever it's pointing with the barrel. That's the flow of the bullet. That means fire. And then whenever it's perpendicular to the barrel, it is a no-go. It is not going to fire. Easy enough. It's like a wall. Stop yeah, it. like a wall. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And of course, you know, these things are super light, super handy. In fact, uh, Max Brooks starred the Emily Carbine in yeah. the Zombie Survival Guide because he thought mm. for the average person, something that was lightweight, yeah. but still had a moderate uh, kind of powered cartridge and you know the capacity to, to you know carry a decent number of rounds, yeah. 15 standard magazine and then 30 round magazines came along with the M2 Carbine, which right. still worked just fine in this. Yeah, exactly. Um, made I, it a winner. Yeah, I would say for Zombie Apocalypse, absolutely, because they're lightweight rifles too. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, six, seven pounds? Something if, like that. Yeah. Yeah, if that. And then on top of that, the 30 carbine's an effective cartridge. I'd say very effective within about two, two, three hundred yards mm -hmm. or so. Accurate rifle, very light recoiling, whole lot of fun to shoot for the zombie apocalypse. This thing is just money, right? Yeah. So 
<laughs> I would absolutely agree with that. So there you go, guys. We've got an assortment of different manufacturers. Uh, all of these, again, you know, either lightly refinished or heavy, depending on what type of stock variation you would like. The choice is yours. All the metal parts have been reblued, and all of them are super freaking cool. That's right. So last rifle I want to talk about, guys, today is one that I've already referred to once today as America's Carbine, which, again, the M1, I truly believe, was the most popular rifle in the United States. The on most one produced rifle of World War II. Yeah. So there more you go. More than the Grand, more than yeah. anything else. Yeah, this is it. And uh, what we've got now, guys, is another service rifle, but this is a replica. This is a FN M4 clone. And uh, this is our current giveaway with Veterans Day just passing, the Marine Corps birthday, Ross Simplify, just passing as well. Figured, you know what? We had one of these in inventory, and I think it's pretty cool because it is dang near the exact same thing that I carry all the way down to the FN logo. That's the military FN logo, not their cool looking civilian one. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, too, has ambi safety on it and even has an auto feature on the receiver. But sorry, boys and girls, it's going to stay right there in semi-auto. And also, too, decided to throw on one of these ACOGs because, well, it's what, what I'm issued yeah. still. The Army might be getting something a little bit cooler, like a, a 1-6 to LPVO, but still got the ACOG, backup iron side on it as well, standard front side. It is a 14 and a half inch pendant weld barrel, little vertical grip, little broomstick, and uh, yeah, guys, it's pretty sweet. It's a lot of fun to shoot. And if you haven't seen our video unveiling this as our giveaway, uh, head on over to classicfirearms.com, hit that top banner. It's going to take you to a web page that shows you all the links to get your entries. And one of those ways is by watching the video. That's right. Code word for this guy is quite simple. It's actually a, a, a code designation, M4A1. I know it's complicated. We threw numbers in there this time, guys. I, I, <laughs> Well, it's only it's only four digits, all right? Four. Yeah, you don't spell it out. Or don't something. don't. It's just M, four A one. I have faith in you guys. You got this, all right? Okay. Anyway, we'll leave it off there, Matt. What's another way they can get some entries? Well, you can certainly get referrals from friends. Yeah. Always the best way. You're going to get the most bang for your buck that way. Right. Um, but in addition to watching some of our videos, you can go and peruse the lovely products on our website. That's absolutely right, guys. So make sure, again, head on over to classicfirearms.com. Check out all those different links to get your entries. Stop by the video. Come say hey. All of those service members out there that are watching, hey, thanks again for your service. We appreciate you guys as always. And as always, God bless you guys. We appreciate your business. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.